Good morning. How the devil are you doing this fine day? Me, uh, if I'm being completely honest, I feel dog rough today, actually. I ache all over and there's probably not enough tea in the world to make me feel any better. But I am mummy's brave soldier, so the show must go on. So let's roll that intro and get this show on the road. Welcome to The Breakfast Show. I'm your host, Mark Anthony. It's Tuesday, the 12th of October, and as that remarkably persistent guy just said, welcome to The Breakfast Show. I am your host, Mark Anthony. In today's show, JCB has unveiled its latest rotary telehandler. Manitou has unveiled a new safety pack for its telehandlers. We have an exclusive machine mashup from Hyundai, and we are going to look beyond the headlines of an ongoing court case surrounding the avoidable death of a scaffolder on a Welsh demolition site. In in addition to all of that, technology allowing, we will be joined live very, very soon by our roving reporter, uh, Mr. Peter Haddock. Uh, We'll get to all of that in just a second. But first, let's see who among the rich and the shameless is marking their birthday on this day of days. And it's many happy returns to former mastermind presenter Magnus Magnuson, to superstar and supersized tenor Luciano Pavarotti, and to the Sam half of Sam and Dave, Mr. Sam Moore, uh, to a guitarist who knew at least three chords and used them all. In generally the same order, actually. Status quo is Rick Parfit. Happy birthday also to disgraced athlete Marion Jones, and to an actor best known to the world as Wolverine, Mr. Hugh Jackman. Many happy returns to them, one and all. Now, by the miracle of technology, we're about to throw over to uh, our roving reporter, Peter Haddock, who is out in the wilds at the moment. But given that he's such a regular on the show, while I'm getting him on the show, why don't we play his brand new intro? (laughs) Mr. Haddock, good morning. Oh, what a nice surprise that was, Mark, the brand new <laughs> intro. Thank you very much. And Mark, I am here today um, for something really quite exciting. It is the National Highways, used to be called Highways England, uh, Innovation Day. And we're talking about the road to net zero for the plant sector by 2050. And there's some steps that are going to come along a lot quicker than that. There's actually a presentation going on at the moment I've ducked out of, uh, which is an exciting element to the start of the day. I'll be catching up with the team on that. But I've come behind the scenes into the actual area where people are are showing off some of those pieces of equipment that are going to be part of getting us to net zero. And Mark, unusual for me, it's the Stream C. Uh, This here is not a digger, Mark. This is actually a ground-penetrating radar. It's got something like 20 to 30 sensors in it. You can go down to depths of about two to three metres, depending on the surface. uh, That's from Leica Geosystems, and it's part of the journey, Mark, because with this, you're going to find that how we do things is changing, and how we do things that, that we have to do when we look within in the plant sector is obviously we have to dig and the utility strikes and cable strikes etc are a real problem for our industry with ground penetrating radar of course you can see under the ground map that with 3d machine control which we all know is mandated on national highways projects now has been for some time we actually can then dig and avoid these things which is great but this is also about net zero so you'll see mark have some nice looking electric machines from SMTGB Volvo and also from JCB and this is from Flannery who's also exhibiting here today with other big names like Lynch Plant Hire as well and so Mark what this is really about is everybody getting together and saying we've got to have a solution to this problem and National Highways remember gives out millions and millions of pounds worth of work every single year and that is a really big incentive for them to lead this and to bring everybody together here to share that information and uh, we are close to uh, a, a helipad by the sounds of things mark because there's one going over right now of course they'd choose this moment wouldn't they <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, the, the timing of the helicopter is not so great, but the timing of the event is, is absolutely ideal because we, we've recently reported, and I know you've reported it as well, um, the government is has earmarked £650 billion for infrastructure. A lot of that will go to the roads community, won't it? It certainly will. And I think what's really fundamental about all of this is how we do things better. You know, we've all complained about the potholes and things like that. And actually the pandemic, people went onto roads and actually did a lot of what I'd call depth repairs. You know, and talking about those is really important as well, because those depth repairs relate to the fact that you don't have to keep going back and filling in the pothole. We're a lot more um, focused on doing things better. And also when you've got that kind of money behind an industry, you really can go for innovations. And we're seeing a lot here today. We're seeing about how people can drive change in the way that in which we power uh, the sites that people are on on these projects because you know some of the big projects are going to have lots of sites that are, that are used to be powered by diesel generators that's not going to be the case in the future we're going to use solar wind power we're also seeing um, people that are talking about renewables here today and how we can power these beasts behind us uh, because we can get the work out of electric obviously mark big projects we're gonna have to move to hydrogen and the hydrogen argument is even more exciting Tees Works, Tees Valley, um, they just announced that they're going to be a leader in hydrogen. And that is part of this huge investment, which I went on with Hall Construction, where next to the door to that is a GE wind farm. I mean, we are moving so fast in these directions and we really need a leader like National Highways to say, hey, we're bringing you all together. Let's all let's have a look at all these things. Can they work? Are they practical? And let's then put them into place. And then, like they've done with machine control, we'll mandate certain things so that we are getting the best possible value and outcomes. But Mark, it's also all about the operators. As we know, we've got to get the operators in and we've got to train them into doing that. And these are commitments that these, uh, these manufacturers, these dealers and these technology providers are actually making to national highways. And there's no surprise that we've got lots and lots of training centres opening up. I've been to the one with Lynch Plant Hire, Flannery as well and uh, and of course the uh, western college which is uh, a, a joint venture with plant force you know all of the big players are pushing hard on that and we're seeing a lot of funding for this because we need more people and those technology enabled young people just fly when they're putting them in a machine uh, with all the gadgets and gizmos Mark. it sounds like you're going to have a very busy day peter where can people find out more are you going to be broadcasting live on your own channels today I've just broadcast live before your show just to test out the scenario to see if it all works. Uh, so that's on LinkedIn and Content With Media on Facebook. I'm going to hopefully find some willing guests to actually go live with here. I've got, picked one out already that have agreed to do that. So I'm going to be going live. Peter Haddock on LinkedIn um, and Content With Media on Facebook, hopefully throughout the day as I pick off different players that are exhibiting here today. Fantastic. Well, Peter, have a great day. Thanks for um, for checking in with us. I uh, hope, uh, hope to see your, your content a bit later in the day. Thanks, Mark. And a pleasure yet again to have you, myself come into your show. And thank goodness for the 4G that's worked today. <laughs> Long may it continue. Speak to you soon. Indeed. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye. So, is it a telehandler? Yes. Is it a crane? Kind of. Is it an access platform? Sometimes. Is it a JCB? Yeah, it most certainly is. Uh, yesterday afternoon, the fine folks at JCB drew back the curtain on the latest addition to its market-leading range of telehandlers. This is the 555-260R. <laughs>
That rotary tele handler boasts a 5.5 ton lift capacity and a 25.5 meter maximum working height. The new unit is offered with a wide range of attachments, including, get this, pallet forks, a 5.5 ton carriage winch, a 2 ton and 2 meter jib winch, a reduced height jib, a 5.5 ton hook, a light duty bucket, a 360, uh, 360 degree rotating forks, and a man basket. Uh, together, these attachments allow the 555-260R to operate as a telehandler, a crane, and a mobile elevating work platform. The package is available with both EPA Tier 4 F and EU Stage 5 emissions models, with auto engine idle and auto engine stop features as standard on the Stage 5 version. You can find out more about this over, <coughs> excuse me, over at jcb.com. Right, let's stick with all things telehandler, uh, but let's switch the yellow for red and the British for French. Earlier this morning, those fine messieurs over at Manitou unveiled details of their new safety pack that is designed to protect both the operator and those working around them. As you've already, as you've surely come to expect, we have the exclusive footage. Axoft and Svantec are your high-end partners for noise, vibration, dust and air quality systems, sensors and software. To find out more, visit axoft.co.uk or call 01234 639 550. This is, or should I say, this was Jeff Pleavy, and I hope I'm pronouncing his surname correctly. Mr. Pleavy was a scaffolder who was working on a derelict church in Cardiff back in 2017. Now, you'll note that I'm using the past tense here. That's because on the 18th of July, my eldest daughter's birthday, incidentally, Jeff Pleavy went to work and never returned home. Um, instead, the 56-year-old man was crushed to death when a wall collapsed, crushing him beneath uh, sadly, a death on a UK demolition site is not in itself unique. The fact that it's taken more than four years to come to court hardly marks this as an unusual case either. 
What does make this case notable, however, are two factors. The first is that the collapse had been described as wholly predictable. The trial, which is taking place as we speak, has been told that a report commissioned by Network Rail into the, into the building found the church to be in a poor state and the rear wall in danger of imminent collapse. That report was sent to the owner of the building in 2016 and shared with the demolition contractors, but not with the scaffolding contractor. Despite the report's warning and the obvious danger posed by the rear wall, the prosecution said contractors failed to carry out sufficient works to stabilise it. Scaffolding erected around the building was then tied to the wall, making any collapse liable to take the scaffolding with it. Lead prosecutor Andrew Langdon QC has told the court collapse of the unstable wall was long predicted. Unsupported and dangerous as it had been throughout, it had become even more dangerous since the demolition of the church had begun. The prosecution claimed no one had taken responsibility of the project as a whole, describing the management of the site as dysfunctional. An open and shut case, you might think. But the other thing that marks this case as unusual is the sheer breadth of the prosecution. Stuart Swain, a director of Swain Scaffolding, and Keith Young of demolition firm Young Contractors both stand accused of gross negligence, manslaughter, Meanwhile, Mark Gully of Amos Projects Limited, who had owned the Citadel Church since 2006, and Richard Lyons, a partner of Optima Scaffold Design Solutions, are also on trial. Two other men, Phil Thomas, who was uh, Keith Young's health and safety advisor from South Wales Safety Consultancy, and Richard Dean from NJP Consultant Engineers, have already pleaded guilty to health and safety offences. That trial is expected to take up to 10 weeks at the Nightingale Court, one of the justice centres set up to ease the backlog of cases caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The Miller GT series heralds a new era of unrivaled power and cutting edge intelligent coupler technology, increasing job site safety, machine versatility and productivity. It's the added versatility that you need at the value you can afford. To find out more, visit millergroundbreaking.com. Some equipment manufacturers release a video to show off a new product or to showcase a new service or system. Some release a video to show how a machine is working in a specific application or how it's helping a specific customer. But sometimes, just sometimes, a manufacturer will issue a video just because it looks cool. This new offering from the fine folks at Hyundai squarely fits into that latter category. So sit back and admire this. Terrific film. Uh, thanks to Hyundai for sharing that with us and also to our friend Louise Carney for bringing it to our attention. Sorry to interrupt the guy with the funny glasses, but if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button as it helps our channel. Or better still, share this video with a friend or a colleague. Thank you. Right, back to Beardy. Right, that pretty much wraps up the main part of today's show. Um, I've got a, another video to record um, in about what? 30 minutes time so that will keep me on my toes um i will roll the outro in just a second before hopping over into the chat very quickly to see what you've all got to say for yourselves today uh, i'll be back here tomorrow morning same time same place for more of this old stuff and nonsense but until then stay safe look after yourself your family your friends and your colleagues and thanks for watching